Welcome back to the ECG course. This is chapter five on rates and rhythms, and we're going to get right into this. So here we have a typical uh, ECG rhythm on a single lead, and it's important to, able to be able to identify the rate. Now when I went over the ECG paper and what all the different lines were uh, identifying, I sort of taught you a quick way to identify the rate. I told you that these little lines that stick up here, these are your one second markers because in each one contains five big boxes from left to right and each big box is 0 0.20 seconds. So if you multiply that times five, you get one second. All right, so each one of those lines is one second. So we have one second here, one second here, one second here, 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 and here. So that gives us a total of six seconds. All right, so this is a six second strip. And I taught you that since it's a six second strip, six times 10 equals 60, and 60 seconds is equal to one minute. So if you want to get the patient's heart rate per minute, you can sort of do a quick little estimate by counting the QRS complexes. We have one, two, three, four, five. You take that number five and you also multiply it by 10 and it will give you the heart rate or a, a rough estimate, 50 beats per minute. Beats per minute. Okay, it's a rough estimate and it's only gonna work uh, if you have a six second strip. But there's other ways to quickly identify the rhythm. If you have a patient with a very regular rhythm, okay, what you can do is you can use this 300 rule. And it can't be a slow rhythm. I, this rhythm here of 50 beats per minute, this is the same as the one we were using before, it's not a very good example to use, okay? And you'll see that we weren't even that accurate, but if we use this method, which is much more accurate. Uh, so you're gonna start at a QRS complex that's on one of these bold lines right here. One of these bolder lines, all right? And you're going to count the big boxes between that QRS complex and the next one. So since this QRS complex is kind of far off, we, we have too many boxes, but if we did have one that occurred right here, if our next QRS complex occurred right there, well, that would say that we have somebody at 300 beats per minute. What you're going to do is you're going to take the number of big boxes and you're going to divide 300 by that number. So if you only had one big box, you would do 300 divided by one is 300. If we had a QRS complex here, Let's say we didn't have that second one, and our next one was right here. It was right there. You do 300 divided by 2, because there's two boxes in between, and you would have 150 beats per minute, and so on and so forth. If your QRS complex was here, you would have 1, 2, 3 big boxes. 300 divided by 3 is 100 beats per minute. And if, it was, if there was 4, let's try that again. If there was four big boxes in between, it would be 300 divided by four, which is 75 beats per minute. And then the next one would be 60 beats per minute. And then the next one would be 50 beats per minute. So that's the 300 rule. You might see a lot of people kind of quickly look at an EKG and count those boxes in between and give a rough estimate of what the uh, heart rate might be. So let's look at uh, this rhythm here, this next one. And let's use that 300 rule here. All right, if I, let's say this one right here appears to be on a bold line pretty, pretty nicely. So let's mark that as the one we're going to count. All right, so then we're going to count the big boxes in between that QRS complex and the next one. And we have one, two, three large boxes. One, two, three. And a little bit. Looks like there might be a, a, a small, one small box in between that, but we'll take that, that three. 300 divided by three is 100. So our heart rate is just under 100 beats per minute. All right, let's look at another one. And let's determine both 
the heart rate and the regularity that we talked about before. All right, if we use our, our six second rule here, I believe we could do that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and if we counted the QRS complexes within there, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven. So seven times 10 will give us our estimated heart rate of 70. Okay, let's also determine if this is a regular or an irregular heart rhythm. Again, I, I said you could do that by taking a piece of paper or a set of calipers and measuring between the first two QRS complexes and then measuring that against the next ones that follow and you'll see that this stays very regular so we would call this rhythm regularly regular okay keep those off to the side there let's look at our next one so this rhythm you can obviously tell that it is irregular and we could take our calipers and show you that there's no pattern or anything none of these spaces match it's very irregular in fact we would call this rhythm irregularly irregular because none of this matches and we would want to get a heart rate but since it's irregular we can't really use our 300 box rule because if I measure the spaces between the first complex here and the second complex here that's not going to be the same as the, the uh, spaces between the next two complexes. So let's use our six second rule. Is this a six second strip? One, two, three, four, five, six. It is. So we can count the complexes within it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, and 18. We have 18 complexes. So we would take that number 18, multiply that by 10, and you would get 180 beats per minute. That's pretty fast. And you could tell that this patient is having a fast, irregularly irregular heart rhythm. It may actually require treatment. So here, this rhythm, also irregular. So we would use that six second method again. This is a six second strip, so let's just count the complexes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that has a 60 beats per minute heart rate. And again, we said it was irregular. And just to show you again, I believe we've already done this one in the uh, past lecture, but you can see that there's no pattern. And this is a very irregularly irregular rhythm. All right, the next one here, let's first see if it's regular. So we're going to measure up those two QRS complexes first and compare them to the next. Looks the same. Looks the same. Also looks the same. And so on and so forth. All right, very, very regular. Actually, we might, might have had a slight irregularity there. So double checking doesn't hurt. Very regular and then we have a slight irregularity there. So we would call this rhythm irregular. All right. And then we would go ahead and now count out our heart rate. Again, it's a six second strip. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beats. So eight times 10 is a heart rate of 80. Okay, let's look at the next one. All right, let's first see if it's regular. We're measuring to the uh, bottom of the negative part of that wave. And notice that these QRS complexes look pretty much different than any other one you've seen. It is a very regular rhythm. It is regularly regular. And the rate, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, 
five and six. The rate's just at 60. Let's do another one. This one you can tell is slow right off the bat because that's a six second strip. You have a total of four complexes on there. So it gives you a heart rate of 40. And let's see if that's regular. It looks, looks like it is from the uh, long distance view, but never hurts to measure. Yep, pretty regular. Let's do another one. Let's see if it's regular first. This one you can also obviously see has a heart rate of 40, about four beats on this uh, six second strip. So it is also regular. So we're just reviewing things that we've already gone over, the rate and the rhythm. Now this one is irregular. You can see right off the bat that it's irregular. Let's see if there's a pattern here. If this space is the same as this space, which it is, and let's see if these spaces are the same. They are, so that's a pattern. We'd call that regularly irregular, okay? And since there is an irregularity, we would wanna get the heart rate using the six second rule. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, about 70 beats per minute. Okay, with these fast ones, it's always important to identify if it's regular or not by measuring. Okay. And it looks pretty dang regular. Yeah, if you measure that all the way throughout, you would see it's pretty regular. And we don't have to count all of those in that six seconds. Since it's pretty regular, we can do that 300 box method. And we could just say that this one's on a bold line here. So let's count from that one. Wait, get that out of there. And we have one, about two boxes. So we could say this is about 150 beats per minute because 300 divided by two is 150. So that's roughly 150 beats per minute, maybe even a little bit faster than that. Let's look at the next one here. We've already looked at this one in the last chapter. We know that this is, uh, a pattern. So you got these two spaces and these are going to match these two spaces over here. And this would be a continued pattern of three beats with a space in between. So it would be called regularly irregular. And you can see there's six complexes there and that's going to have a heart rate of 60. So this one being very, very slow, it's only got two beats. We can it's a rough estimate of about 20 beats per minute. This patient's going to be very, very ill. Uh, we can't even determine regularity because we only have two complexes there, so we don't know. Uh, we'd have to print out a bigger stri strip to uh, identify the regularity of that rhythm. All right, we have another one. And you can see right off the bat there's an irregularity, but let's see. Let's measure from these positive deflections, this R wave here. If these match up, there's a good chance that this this could be a pattern of three beats, but again, you'd have to print out a longer strip to see if that pattern continues, you know, down the rhythm. All right, so it's pretty slow. You can see that it's only got about four beats on there, which would give us a heart rate of about 40 beats per minute. All right, let's see the next one here. This one's kind of faded out, almost very difficult to see. But if you measure it, it looks pretty dang regular there. And let's try to use our 300 rule. Let's say that this one here, that's on our bold line. And we've got one, two, three, almost four boxes until the next QRS complex. So this heart rate's gonna be a little bit faster than 75 because 300 divided by four is equal to 75. So this rate is actually gonna be between 75 and 100 because it's not three, there's not three large boxes, but almost four large boxes between uh, the two R, R waves there. Let's take a look at another one. Now this one's kind of confusing because you actually have two sets of QRS complexes and this is gonna be a rhythm 
that we haven't talked about yet. All right, and let's just measure these and we'll see that this rhythm is regular and it would be regular all the way down and this rhythm is actually identical has the identical amount of space between the two QRS complexes and is also going to be very regular. Now the rate will be dependent on it, whether these were pulse producing or not, these extra beats that we're seeing. Um, but the rate, if it was, you could count it in double. You could, so you could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, oops, thirteen, fourteen, and let's say about 15. Now there, that final one's there, 16. So that would be about 160 beats per minute. But you're only going to really want the uh, underlying rate if those weren't pulse producing, or if you knew the underlying rhythm uh, and this was considered ectopy, which would be half of that, which would be about 80 beats per minute. So it gets a little bit more confusing when, when this interesting stuff starts happening on the EKG. Uh, and you're going to have to be able to identify that later on. All right, a couple more. Let's see if this is regular. Now, these fast ones, you always want to measure out and see if they are truly regular. The other trick you can use to, to quickly identify if it's regular is looking at the numeric EKG heart rhythm on the monitor. If that numeric EKG heartbeat is staying the same, then it is a probably a regular rhythm. If it is changing, it's probably irregular. This one's very regular. And you can see that between those QRS complexes, there isn't quite two large boxes, but there definitely is one large box. So it's going to be between uh, 150 and 300 beats per minute. Okay, so probably around 200 beats per minute. That's a pretty fast rhythm there. And one last one. All right, let's take a look and see if this underlying rhythm is regular. Okay, measuring this out. It looks to be pretty regular. All right, and then you have a beat, and then you have one, two, three, four complexes of normal ones again, and then you have another beat. So the underlying rhythm is regularly regular, but you have these slight irregularities here, okay? And you'll see that when we identify this type of ectopy, that that's not gonna really interfere with your ability to interpret the EKG rhythm. So that's it for now. We were just kind of covering some basics uh, on the heart rate and the rhythm. In chapter six, we're going to talk about the systemic or systematic approach to EKG interpretation. That's a quick chapter. I just kind of give you the basics on interpreting EKGs. And then right after that, we're going to go into interpreting some. So if you want to go back and you want to review the EKG intervals or the ECG intervals, uh, click the left picture, chapter four. Click on the right picture, chapter six, to talk about the systematic approach. And don't forget to subscribe. As always, leave us some comments and give us the big thumbs up on the bottom.